here's an idea of a 30-30 deal. Okay, 30 days due diligence, 30 days closing, and assuming 30 days to get financing as part of that. So I've got the categories and what's happening on each week. Okay, so week one, you've got to get your earnest money paid. You've got to start your investment presentation. You've got to start your PPM because once they have the property, you can start folding that into the equation. Start doing a due diligence, reviewing all the, receive all of the documents, okay? The seller has to provide all those so that you can re review them. Um, then you also have inspections on site um, that's walking every single individual unit. So you can see every one of those. Make sure they're occupied. Make sure that that then matches up with the leases and the leases match up with the rent roll, okay? So it's an audit, it's a file audit. Okay, lease audit. Look at all the contracts, your landscaping contract, telephone contract, cable contract, uh, pest control contract. Vicki can probably name off about 50 more. Review the, uh, get the insurance, get, to get that started, the first thing they're going to ask for is loss runs. So you need to get the loss runs from the seller on, on what kind of claims they've had so that they can help bid that. Um, review the documents, contracts for management, verify everything with legal because they're moving ahead. Talk to potential lenders and start, start getting people ready for raising money. So is that a busy week one? Okay. Okay, who was it that wants to be a sponsor? Okay. There was only a few, a few hands went down or some of them are a little bit lower. A little bit lower. Okay. Week two. Now, with starting your PPM, part of that is organizational docs, so you have to start your entity. So you create your entity, which is actually down here, create your LLC, and, but you have to use that to open a bank account so that you can start putting the funds in there, so that, which you have to fund to get everything started and pay through that. Set up your LLC, do your inspections, and uh, shit, just look at the, all of it. Okay. Week three is just a continuation of that process. And hopefully you start to have numbers together. For example, from Vicki and Edwin and Michael, I'll start to have numbers back on what their operating budget is going to be. So they take the financials, historical financials, which like on a property, if they say their expenses are $3,000 per unit, we go in there and do a budget and say, wait a minute, we can't use their, their historical numbers because the property looks like crap. They're not taking care of it. We're going to run that more expensive than they are. So then we actually have to have a budgeted number for our operations. It might be exactly opposite. There's one property I looked at. Their expenses were $7,800 a unit when they should have been $5,000. Okay. So little test for those of you who've been around a while. If we can lower the expenses by $2,500 a door, that increases the what? NOI. And $1 equals 12. So if you can re reduce the expenses by $2,500, that increases the value per unit uh, to what? By about 30 grand a door. That's a management value play. But why are their expenses so high? In Brookside's instance, they've got how many employees? Nine employees for 288 units. Overkill. Insurance company will do an inspection. Uh, come up with all the numbers so that you can put that together. Here's an important one. You actually have to pick a lender. I hate this part. Well, now that we've got a system and a flow, this, this was always the scary part from the very beginning. It's kind of, I think of this as like a horse race, okay? And you're going to go out there and you've got all 10 horses out there and you've got to pick what horse to get on. And that's your lender, okay? So which lender are you going to pick, right? So now, but if you pick the wrong lender, 
you won't know for another two, three, four weeks whether or not they actually get it done or if they're going to be difficult to deal with or things like that. Just like Park Row, where we had that lender and a week before closing, they bailed. Okay, so, um, so you need to pick the right horse, which is why it's real important to work with a mortgage broker that actually knows all the lenders and knows how it fits, especially on your first deal. But also with that lender, you also have to know who your KPs are. So you have to have that lined up. Okay. So again, there's, there's a lot to do there. Week four, now all your money is non-refundable. Before then, you could just say, I don't want it. I want my money back. If it was refundable earnest money during due diligence period. If you've got, if you've got a 30-day due diligence period, you can do that. You can say, nope, I'm done. I want my money back. I'm out. Now with hard earnest money, you can go ahead and say, nope, I'm done. I'm out of it. Have fun with my earnest money deposit that I gave you. But in, normal, in a normal market, you can get your earnest money back. Finish your investment presentation now that you have all the data. Do your final private placement memorandum. If your due diligence is over, retrade if needed. Okay. Now, if you find problems that neither you nor the seller knew about, then it's a valid argument for retrading. Retrading means trying to negotiate the price. However, if the seller said we have foundation problems beforehand, and you come back and say, hey, this property has foundation problems, I need $300,000. He's going to say, you knew about it already. I told you about it up front. So no, that's not a valid reason. But if he said, hey, everything's great, and you come back and say, hey, it needs a new roof, or there's foundation problems, or actually in one instance, um, a property in Arlington that was a really good deal, until we realized, we found out in due diligence, that the main sewer line that runs underneath the building, right in the middle of the building, was all rotted out. Okay, So we're talking about a million dollars to replace a rotted sewer line. Well, the seller, he probably knew about it, but he didn't disclose it, which he's not required to. But when we found about it, we said, hey, the only way we can move ahead is if we negotiate this. There, I've got a million dollar extra expense. Now, you can take a couple of different approaches. Um, you can say, hey, it's a million dollar expense I wasn't counting on. I need you to lower the price by a million dollars. My approach is a little bit different. I say, hey, we have this extra expense that I found that any other buyer is going to have, and it's a million dollars. How can you help me out on that? Okay, so that that way he said, well, you know what, I can give you $500,000 credit. And well, I've got some cushion in there, I can only go to seven fifty. dollars So at least it's working it out with, rather than a hard, hey, I need a million dollars. And them saying no. But retrade if needed. Cure the issues for your title and survey to make sure that you can actually buy the property. Verify your insurance. Now you have to, this is the big one, sign a loan commitment, pay an application fee. Application fees are fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, no matter the size of the deal. Okay, because that's for legal fees, that's for their third-party inspections um, that they're going to take right off the bat. Now I take that back. Um, usually it's fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. I've had it as high as fifty that the lender asks for up front. Now, again, that's not whatever they use; they keep. So guess what happens if you put up $50,000? They're going to spend $50,000 on legal fees usually. Usually you're not getting any of that back because it's all fees. Okay. Now you start getting your subscriptions and doing that. So is that a busy month? Don't plan on doing anything that month. Be sure to visit us at darwingerman.com. There you can register for all of our information and see all of the videos. And make sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.